My name is Tanny and I love to cook. Today I'm going to show you how to make some delicious beef neck bones. So I've showed you in the past on this channel how to make pork neck bones, but today we're going to make beef neck bones because a lot of people don't eat pork. So it could be for religious reasons, it could be just because they don't like that particular cut of the pig or whatnot. So I'm going to show you how to make delicious beef neck bones. And this taste will rival that of like oxtails and steak and pot roast. So you're really going to love it. So in it, I'm going to add some Vidalia sweet onions, some garlic, some chicken broth. If you have beef broth, you can absolutely add that. I'm just using chicken broth because that's what I have. And I'm going to make this in my slow cooker. So you can make it, of course, on the stove or in a pressure cooker instant pot or in a slow cooker. So let's get to cooking. This is a beef neck bone. You can see it's meaty, but it has a big bone on it, and you can see some of the fat. It looks very similar to an oxtail. I had some in a Ziploc bag in my freezer, so I thought those out to cook those as well. Because the bones are so big, I do find myself cooking eight to 10 pounds of this at a time to make sure I have enough meat. So I'm just washing it off in clean water and being sure to rub the beef neck bones to get any debris or extra fat off of it before I cook it and then I let it soak in the water and then I pour it out and add more water so I do this two or three times until I feel like it's sufficiently clean I always clean all my meat that isn't ground so I don't clean ground beef or ground turkey but everything else meat wise gets cleaned in water for sure These are the seasonings and vegetables that I'm going to use. I'm going to use a bag of carrots. These were on sale, so I'll just drop some of them in while it's cooking and then some towards the end. I have some Vidalia onions and some bell peppers, orange, yellow, and red. I also have chicken stock that I'm going to use. And then these are the seasonings. So we're going to use some bay leaves, some thyme leaves, some onion powder, garlic powder, and some black pepper. And if you don't like any of these, you can leave it out and season it to taste. Also, I'm using oxtail seasoning. I really love this oxtail seasoning on my red meat. And I turned it to the back so you can see the ingredients. It has sea salt, red pepper, thyme, celery seed, and allspice. That allspice is a key flavor. I like it so much that I bought ground allspice separately to use extra of if I need it. And then I really like the taste of celery flakes. So, in addition to that, you can also use some browning seasoning. It's not required, but it would help with the color for the final product. So I'm just going to turn on my slow cooker, and then I'm going to cut my onions. I'm cutting these into some wedges, not too thin. I'm going to layer them in with the meat and let them cook down and add their delicious flavor to this dish. So I'm just going to add some of the onions in the bottom, then I'll add some meat and seasonings, and add more onions and carrots, and just do that until this crock pot is full. So I'm going to add about a half of this uh, carton of chicken stock. Try to find the low sodium or no sodium chicken stock if you can. And now I'm going to add my seasonings. You can season to your taste. We're seasoning the stock and we're going to season the meat as well. So now you can see my meat is in that I seasoned and now I'm layering onions on top of that. Onions release a lot of moisture, so you want that flavor. And I'm adding no salt. And now I'm adding seasonings to my meat. As I put the meat into the crock pot and turn it over, I'll add seasoning to the other side in the crock pot. I am liberal with my seasonings, as you all know if you watch my other videos, except for the salt and pepper. But everything else, the garlic, onion, thyme, I like to load up on the seasonings because the flavor is delicious and this meat is thick. So I want to make sure the flavor of the seasonings gets all the way through to the center of the meat. So now I'm adding some carrots. Adding carrots at the beginning, they will cook down, but I want them, they'll get a little bit mushy, but I want that flavor to thicken and season the juice that's gonna be made in this crock pot. So I'll add some of the carrots now and then some closer towards the end when I add the bell peppers. So now I'm just wiping off the rim of my crock pot and you can put the lid on. But if you find your lid doesn't fit all the way on and it doesn't seal completely, pro tip, Take the top off and just cover it with aluminum foil. It'll work just as fine. Now, I am actually going to put some on a pot, in a pot on my stove because I have enough to fill that. So, 
In my cast iron Dutch oven on the stove, I'm adding the other half of my chicken stock. And we're going to do the same process. We're going to add seasonings. The same seasonings that we use in the crock pot. You'll notice the meat is already seasoned. And we're going to just add our meat in. Now you'll notice I didn't brown this meat. The bone is so big, I don't see a point in browning the bone. And if I'm cooking in my Instant Pot this red meat, then I would brown it first since it would cook so fast. But this is gonna cook for about eight hours on the stove and in the crock pot. So it'd be absolutely delicious even without me browning it first. That's just my personal take on it. So to my pot, I'm adding onions and carrots, of course. And I am adding some seasoning salt here. And I'm gonna cook this on medium to let it come up to a boil, a rolling simmer, and then I'm going to turn it down. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut my bell peppers. I don't want my bell peppers to get too mushy, so I'm going to add them towards the last 30 minutes or hour of cooking. So my crock pot, I started off on high for four hours, and then I cook it on low for two or three more hours. The time isn't that critical. You want to cook it until it's fork tender. You put your fork in the meat and it just breaks off so softly and gently. That's what you want it to do in your mouth as well. So it depends on how fast your crock pot cooks, how high you have your stove on. But just be prepared for six to eight hours. If you do it on high the whole time, then it might be ready in four or five. But again, you want to cook it to your personal preference. So here I have my bell pepper all chopped up. I love the beautiful colors. You can see that my meat has been cooking for several hours and now I'm just gonna add in my bell peppers. They do add a nice sweetness to the meat and the broth as well as the beautiful color. Look at that, y'all. So beautiful. If you only have green bell peppers, you can certainly use just that as well. I just like the variety of the multiple colors. So now I'm going to add the same thing to my Dutch oven on the stove. You could buy frozen bell peppers. Those are usually diced small. I have these in big chunks, but that's just my personal preference. So now that I have my neck bones done, I'm actually going to serve these the next day. So I'm taking them out of my crock pot and I'm putting them into this big old pan that will fit in my refrigerator overnight. So look at that, y'all. Some beautiful beef neck bones. And look at the colors of the carrots, the bell peppers. I added some green onions. It is steaming beautiful. Absolutely delicious, y'all. You definitely, these neck bones were $1.49 per pound. Oxtails are about $18 to $20 per pound. So you get the same flavor for a lot less look. I, I wanted y'all to see how big this pot of neck bones was. So that's why I'm holding it like that. But yeah, y'all, beef neck bones. And of course, to sop up that beautiful broth and to eat with that delicious meat, I made some of the best buttermilk cornbread. I'm gonna show y'all this re recipe in a separate video. It is so good. But I just made a little small one and I like mine to get golden brown. It is so delicious. And then I'm adding butter on top of it, of course. And I'm just wiping it on, letting it saturate and penetrate the complete top, y'all. So here you have it. Beef neck bones and the best buttermilk cornbread. Leave me a comment below and let me know if you actually cook beef neck bones and how do you prepare yours. These are some of my to-go plates and then this was my plate for the night, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave me a comment down below. Click like on this video and share it if you think some of your friends would enjoy it.